Hey there Bears, I'm Strawberry Stabwound and the long-awaited OC Universe Challenge is officially on. I have spent a lot of time on this trying to make the concept interesting enough for you guys to want to participate, so get ready for a lot of information. Don't worry though, I'll list the rules and everything in my description and on my Instagram. So if you're new here, I tell my subscribers that I'm going to create a universe and then you guys can make OCs for said universe. The story I've come up with is Magical Girls in a Zombie Apocalypse. For this video, I'm going to be working on two of my own OCs for this universe just to give you guys an idea of what to do. Now warning, I didn't think every little thing through, I just thought of what I thought would be enough. Trigger warning, before I start, related to zombie stuff, the usual things you see in that, you know, base level zombie eating, stuff like that. Very simple, but if you are uncomfortable with these topics listed on screen, please take care of yourself. It is very okay for you to not watch this video. I will not be offended. Also, one more thing, as I read the story back, I realized that it kind of sounds like there's a hidden meaning or certain implications, and I just want to say that there really isn't. It is all coincidental, very base level. Okay, that's all. So I'm going to explain how this zombie apocalypse starts with bullet points, because I feel like it's very funny and simple. Halloween party and a bunch of college kids. They go to an abandoned cemetery. They see a building, break in through the fence, and ignore the no trespassing sign and see a bunch of rare, interesting, glowing flowers inside. They see these flowers, set up their party, and as the night goes on, they decide to eat some. A bunch of them eat a flower at the same time as part of a dare. Others do it out of curiosity or just pure stupidity. They eat about half of the flowers that are there, which would be about 25, get infected, bite each other, go around, and infect others. So yeah, pretty basic, but I have no shame in it. For some context, the first generation magical girl souls are literally in the flower and when they were buried they were resting peacefully however once the magical girl's flower is eaten she is not only being awakened but disrespected the only way the magical girl can protect herself is to infect the person who disrespected her soul also for some context magical girls have pretty much been extinct for a while now so they have been resting peacefully for like a few hundred years and now they're being awakened so they're very angry about it now you may be asking how does one even become magical girl? So to become a magical girl, you have to pull a flower from a zombie's head, specifically the glowing flower. Once a zombie bites someone and that person becomes infected, fake flowers will grow to trick people. No matter who pulls these flowers will be infected and become a zombie themselves. The glowing flowers contain a soul, specifically a soul of a magical girl. Once the flower is pulled, the magical girl's soul is freed, and as a way to show her appreciation, she will pass her powers onto whoever pulled the flower. There is an age limit to being a magical girl, however, starting at 16, as the magical girls felt anybody younger was incapable of protecting themselves. So if someone younger than 16 pulls the flower, the magical girl will stay with the person in spirit until they turn 16. Though, because they are not able to be with them physically, the only way they can protect them is to tell them how to hide, where to run, and who they think should be trusted. They pass their powers onto the kid once it hits 16. There is no age limit for being too old, however. Also, in terms of gender, I just want to specify this. Only girls, which yes, trans women count, I just need to make that clear, no transphobia here, and non-binary people are able to be magical girls. The magical girl system has been around for centuries, so non-binary people were able to like fit into the system because they're not girls, but they aren't really guys either, and that's what matters most to them. There are three zombie ranks and three magical girl ranks. I'm gonna go over the magical girl ranks first, then what you guys have to base your magical girls off of. The magical girls are based off of flowers and I will link a website in the description with over 400 types so you guys aren't stressed about not knowing a bunch of different types of flowers. I can't believe there's over 400. I mean, it makes sense, but still, it, it astonishes me. So the two magical girls I've created are based off of the African fire lily and the Japanese bead rose. You can choose to base your magical girl either off of the actual flower or what the flower reminds you of and makes you think of, or pretty much the vibe of it. I did an example of both types to give you guys some help. The flower lily one is based heavily off of the flower. Here she is. Even though I have the speed pan up, I still want to show y'all so you can see what I did. Here's the flower, and here's the character. I based both the colors and shape of the outfit off of the flower, having it go up and feel close and sharp just like the flower. Before I tell y'all about the magical girl ranks, intermission time. It's very early in the video, I know, but this is the only place it would really fit. Just so you guys know, this intermission is related, so please do not skip. Drink some water, stretch, and listen up. So I thought it'd be fun and maybe even motivating if I chose some winners for this. Now I want to say this is not at all based off of simply art skill. I don't want my less experienced viewers to feel nervous or like I won't choose them because I'm going to base it off of magical girl design and 
if you guys want to, you do not have to, story. So please don't stress about art experience, okay? That is not the point of this. The point is to have a good time and for us to get to know each other better in this community. I will create a hashtag for y'all to use so that I don't miss any submissions or if you wouldn't feel comfortable posting on our social media, you can 100% send it to me at my Instagram, which is, the link is in the bio, or through my email at strawberrystabwound554 at gmail.com. It's right here on the screen. This is my business email. The hashtag I want you to use is hashtag very magical girl. I know it's kind of silly. I couldn't really think of anything else because I was like magical girl and I was thinking no because that is very vague. So I'm hoping that this one isn't taken. I'm going to check. But yes, this one is good to use. This is the one I'm going to use on my Instagram as well when I make the post for this. So there will be four winners. Three of them I will choose and one I will put into a wheel with all the other participants and then whoever's name comes up will win. So the prizes will be the random winner gets a clean sketch bust art. Third place will get a fully lined bust art. Second place will get a flat color half body. And first place can choose between a fully colored half body or a super fun social media collab with me that I'll post on this channel and my social media. I wanna interact with you guys more and I think that would be really fun. Though if first place chooses the fully colored half body, I will not be upset at all. This challenge will be over by April 25th, but the latest I'll take submissions is going to be the 28th. Now it's time I give y'all more information on how to make your magical girl and the types of zombies that they're dealing with. I had so much fun making these, I hope you guys enjoy it. There are three magical girl ranks, one being the weakest and three being the strongest. In terms of power, strength, agility, etc. The magical girl gains these things in her magical form and they get more intense the higher the rank. The ranks mostly affect the weapon type and certain magical stuff, so for example, the higher the rank, the higher your chances of surviving close combat are, which means only high ranks are able to use smaller weapons and stuff like that. The way to know ranks is to look at your tattoo. Every rank gets one. The less developed the flower, the lower the rank. I drew them. Here's an example of each flower in each rank. Magical girls rank up by the amount of zombies they eliminate. Rank 1 have to kill 150 zombies and save one magical girl's soul. Rank 2 have to kill 300 regular zombies and 50 rank 3 zombies and save 5 magical girl's souls. Rank 1 magical girls are only able to use really big weapons because the previous magical girl that turned them into one gave them a huge weapon as a way to say, hey, good luck. I really hope this huge weapon will make things easier. The higher their rank, the more weapon variety, though the magical girl can stick to her big weapon if she wants to. Starting at rank 2, magical girls are able to use their magic to morph the last zombie they eliminated to their weapon. So it gives the weapon either a mouth or eyes, so it can either munch on the zombies or it can sense other zombies in her area. The magical girl is connected to her weapon, so when it sees anything, she pretty much gets a sense about it as if she knows someone's watching her or someone's behind her. Not just that, but the mouth and eyes warp onto where she needs them to be on the weapon. The color of the weapon stays the same as she ranks up, it's just the shape that gains more variety now. Here's the finished drawing, I love this design so much. The magic you want to give your magical girl can really be anything, the most important thing is for them to be based off of a flower, that's the most important thing for me. Also your magical girl does not even have to have powers, her magic can just all be in the weapon that she has. Because of the world they're in, I thought it'd be kind of funny if the magical girls never transform more than once, which is when they were first transformed, because like, they're in a zombie apocalypse. So they're always gonna be on edge and always need to be in need of their powers. This next character is based off of the vibe of a flower rather than the flower design itself. I gave her a gyaru and kind of Y2K aesthetic because I've seen a lot of gyarus actually with this type of flower in their hair before if I'm correct. And I made her color scheme have a lot of pink to match the flower. Also her weapon is very cool. Ah, I'm so excited for you guys to see it. Okay, onto the zombies. Also before anybody says anything, I know that this is like the last of us with how the zombies are. I haven't watched the show or played the game, but I still should realize, but it's way too late for me to change it now. And I think I came up with some pretty cool ideas aside from the show. Also, here's the notes I took in my sketchbook. All this here is what I'm about to say. I just think it's cool if you guys see my process and how sketchy my sketchbook art really is. I know before I start, the zombies with the glowing flower are stronger and smarter. Rank one, the usual zombie type. It eats and it bites. It has vines on its legs that help it stay upright due to the fact the body and flower have not adjusted to each other and the illness is still strong and beating down the body. The zombie still has all five senses. The whole head is still visible and there is one easy to view flower on top. They rank up after two weeks, but they evolve two times faster if they eat a magical girl. Rank two, the illness has evolved and is now able to camouflage the real flower, creating new ones that surround it. None of the fake flowers glow. There are vines all around the body as a way to protect and defend itself. The vines wrap around the arms and legs in a kind of swirly motion to make sure most of it is protected. The body is stronger and it doesn't need the vines to keep it up. 
The body is more connected to the flower, so the vines will assist in grabbing and slashing, and at times the vines will wrap around the hands and form a claw during combat. They have no sense of sight or smell, and their sense of sound is muffled. However, their sense of touch is incredibly sensitive. They kind of have the thing Top has, so this zombie will either be seen crawling or dragging its vines on the floor to understand its surroundings. They rank up after a month and a half, but they evolve three times faster if they eat a magical girl. Rank 3. The human head has now been fully replaced by a flower. The glowing flower is hidden even better due to the fact a bunch of flowers are now sprouting and blooming from the sides of the head flower. They have no sense of sight, smell, or hearing, but their sense of touch is even more advanced, and they now use echolocation, using their vines to create a sound to bounce off of their surroundings. The head flower eats. Eats what? That's for y'all to decide. So, yeah, that was a lot. I have two more notes. The glowing flower's vine will grow as it tries to hide and adapt to the evolving zombie. Flowers will grow while the person was bit. Now, I'm gonna give you all a summary of their backstories. I wrote this in a kind of descriptive way, just cause I thought it'd be more fun. So prepare to hear me read like it's an audiobook. Get ready. Also, I'm not really an author type. I'm not really a voice actor type. I stutter a lot, but I'm not gonna try and do that for this. Also, I haven't written a lot or practiced a lot like I should have same for voice acting. So be kind to me, okay? We're all learning. <laughs> and just so y'all know, the first story is going to be about the fire one. Her name is Tanae. Tanae was on her way to a Halloween party, but due to her sense of direction being endearing at best and pathetic at worst, she was already an hour late. How the hell is she supposed to find an abandoned cemetery by herself? I think this is the right way. She mumbles and looks around, using her phone flashlight to guide her through the empty, barren roads. There's streetlights above her, but they're connected by bridges of darkness, each one feeling farther from the last. Echoes of music and pebbles dancing around her feet alert her that she's closer than she thinks. Joyful, playful screams morph into desperate, anguished ones, and Tanae books it into another direction, hoping that somehow the roads will lead her home. The sounds of footsteps follow behind her, so loud and scattered she's unable to tell how many there are. The sounds of screaming and thumps of people falling are followed by steps she can actually count now. Seven. Five. Four. She thinks she's able to pinpoint three people now behind her. God, I don't want to look back. Please, please don't be something bad. She's not willing to turn her head to see, but she realizes she needs to find somewhere to rest. Fast. She's not used to running like this, and her outfit is starting to squeeze her body, and it's getting hard to breathe. She waits until it's pitch black, turning to the dirt to hide and catch her breath. She latches onto a tree and coughs, her phlegm choking her, sticking to her throat until she's able to spit it out. A branch cracks, and her body stops. The blood in her body is boiling in place. At least... That's what it feels like. Sounds of grumbling and moans get closer to her, but she can't tell where they're coming from. She covers her mouth, still out of breath. She feels herself get lightheaded and slowly moves her hand underneath her nose, desperately taking any small breath she can. The moans stop, and after 15 seconds, she gasps again, falling to the floor. She waited too little, though, and the zombie rushes in her direction, jumping on top of her. She's able to hold the top of its head and the bottom of its jaw, but it's stronger than her and pushes against her, only an inch away from her face. God, its breath smells rancid. A mix of manure and something rotten. Tanae is barely able to keep its head up, her hands becoming slippery and her elbows locking up. A flower is above its head, connected to it. She grabs the flower in a desperate attempt to save herself from time, maybe pull it back. She pulls it as hard as she can and the zombie goes limp, its head now resting in between her neck and shoulder. She screams and pushes it off, crawling away to gag and maybe cry. What seems like sand bursts out of the flower, and it opens, a little orb of light escaping it. Tanae hears a quiet, thank you, and begins to float. She feels stronger as she spins around. A weapon of fire grows in her hands, but it doesn't burn. She falls back to the floor and is confused at her seemingly short transformation, or whatever that was. She turns to the orb and tilts her head. What did you do to me? The orb bounces lightly as the sound of a chuckle radiates off of it. Thank you for saving me. I hope my gift to you will keep you safe. The orb's light dims and Tanae scrambles, thinking of something, anything to ask. And all that she can muster up is, what am I? What am I supposed to do? Save us. The sound is quiet and weak, and Tanae grabs at the orb, tears welling in her eyes, but before she can grab it, it's gone. So that's Tanae's story, or at least the beginning of it. Her magic is fire-based, very simple. Here's a sketch of what she looked like before, and here's after, as y'all have seen. 
Chrome 4 is a lot more boring, less vivid colors, and also has way less whimsical features. I also thought it would be really cool if her hat is face down, it's more lumpy, you know, and I gave her cooler colors for her costume and then it completely goes against that in her Magical Girl one. Also, she doesn't have any of the cool accessories or personality in her outfit, as y'all can see, it's quite boring. <laughs> now onto the Gyaru by 2K Girly, Liana. Liana was visiting her family for Halloween. She only lived two hours away and thought it would be sweet to surprise them, and her homesickness was really starting to affect her work. She's never been known for her punctual nature, so she didn't even reach the streets of her hometown until nighttime. She bobs her head along to the beat of her radio, lightly tapping her steering wheel with her fingertips. The streets have been empty for a while, so I don't think anybody will care if I... Liana begins to speed up, pushing her shoe onto the pedal harder, anxious to get home soon. She turns a corner and out of nowhere a person runs into the road, clashing into her car and falling on impact. Liana gasps and runs out into the street, grabbing a bottle of 800 ibuprofen in her bag. Oh god, I hope this is enough. I still haven't gotten insurance. She mumbles under her breath and leans over the body. The darkness makes it hard to tell what's going on or what the person looks like, but something just doesn't feel right. The body isn't moving, and it smells rotten, but there's no way the body could have decayed this quickly, right? She covers her mouth in an attempt to hold in her gag, trying to spare the feelings of this mysterious stranger. Oh god, oh my god, oh my god! She squats next to the body, now holding her breath, and pokes at its shoulder. Nothing. She whines and looks around, her shoulders falling out of defeat. Fuck. Come on. Please. She shakes the person one more time, and there's no response. She takes out her phone and is about to call 911, when a hand grabs at her legs and the body begins to moan. Liana tries to kick it away and screams, turning on her flashlight to see what the hell this person looks like. And her heart drops. It's a... person? At least it looks like it was one once. Their clothes are ripped and there seems to be bite marks, but it's hard to tell because they're hidden underneath flowers and vines wrapped around the wounds. The zombie opens his mouth to take a bite out of Liana, but before it's able to, she hits it with her purse as hard as she can, the impact pushing it backwards. Panting, on the brink of tears, Liana stomps down on its head, not enough to break through, but enough to delay it. She looks down, horrified at this creature-human thing, and sees a glowing flower. Oh, I must have missed that. Well, this thing will miss it, I guess. She keeps her foot on its head and pulls it out, smiling at the random flower she found trying to find any positive in this situation. What looks like glowing sand bursts out and an orb of light pops out, happily spinning around Liana. Thank you, thank you. The voice is tiny, but passionate. It bounces around Liana, seemingly analyzing her. Perfect, you're perfect. Liana giggles and tilts her head at the orb and she begins to float. Her hair gains bigger, healthier curls. It gains two new colors and her outfit also has new colors and accessories. She falls back down to the floor and gleams, spinning around. <laughs> what are you? What is this? I, I feel so much stronger and... lighter? The orb bounces as if it's nodding. Save us! Save us! The light dims and Liana reaches out for it, only for it to be gone. She looks at her empty hands, unaware of what she's supposed to be saving exactly. Oh, oh! The orb is back in her hands, though very dim. Forgot! Good luck! up and grows from the orb into her hands, and now it's officially gone. There's the honest story. Okay, I know the little voice of the orb was cringy. I, I wanted to be like a, a very high-pitched thing, but I can't do that because of my sexy deep voice. But gently, I couldn't. <laughs> my throat hurts. I've had to re-record me reading these parts. Like, I kid you guys not five times. So, I'm, yeah, my throat hurts. I appreciate the effort though at least i tried to do voices i guess um but yeah so her story is still stressful but a little more silly i hope people liked the fact that she brought out ibuprofen after she <laughs> ran someone over she thought so yeah my idea for her before outfit is the same dress shape um but without the bow way less layers uh her outfit would not have any of the cool accessories and her hair would be way less curly and more flat with it being just one color or dark brown and obviously her eyebrows would not be as cool so if y'all haven't gotten it yet, the main goal is to save the magical girls. So once again, I'm not really an author type, not a voice actor type, but I really hope you guys enjoy that. It was really fun to do, and it was nice to just info dump for a video. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. And once again, use a hashtag 
very magical girl right here on screen. Message it to me on my Instagram at strawberrystabwound. The link is in the description or my bio. Or if you're uncomfortable with posting or using social media, you can send it to my work email at, here you go, on the screen. <laughs> Thank you all so much for being here this whole time. I really can't wait to see your guys' submissions. And if you don't want to make a story for your character, you do not have to. Just have fun, no stress. And one thing that is so important to me is that if you want to make an overpowered OC, do it, okay? This is a safe space too. No such thing as Mary Sue's. The only thing that matters to me is that you guys have fun. Okay, so that's all today. Please share this with your fellow artist friends if you think they'd be interested. Please be nice to me and your fellow art lovers. Like, subscribe, and follow. Uh, my commissions are open. And I'm gonna post another video tomorrow. Please watch that one as well. It's about my characters and I hope you guys will care about them and watch it, that'd be really cool. I didn't do a premiere for this video because I was super nervous about it. And I, if you guys thought it was cringy, I would rather be able to avoid the comment than see it in real time, but. <laughs> Yeah, thank you guys so much. I hope the rest of your day is fruity. Oh, also, I will be doing a premiere for my video tomorrow. Okay. I hope the rest of your day is fruity and fun. Bye bye. Okay, so I've recorded this part about 20 billion times, and as you can tell, I'm starting to just. Okay, so first of all, I've said this multiple times. You guys are freaks, okay? Based off the comments on my last video, freaks. I do not think I would get that many submissions, <laughs> like comments, especially like. Y'all, y'all, okay, I see. Also, I got a lot of Shigo hate, okay? People call me basic. People, people said that I'm predictable and I'm just some predictable lesbian. And you're right, okay? But that is not, that is, that is not anyone's business by my own. I say even though I have my own channel, but whatever. Um, yeah, so it honestly was really fun to read your comments though. Me and my girlfriend was like, some, look, me and my girlfriend uh, would look at some of them and just, stare in amazement that y'all would admit that nothing wrong with it this is all in good fun by the way i don't want any of you to feel upset or like embarrassed no need to feel embarrassed okay we're all human if they make mrs potts hot they make P mrs potts hot okay and that's not my fucking fault that is disney's fault because they know what they're doing also if you guys didn't see my comment um my embarrassing crushes i'll put them on screen they're both from robots because i rewatched it with my wife recently was the evil mom <laughs> robot she's got problems and the hot one with the big butt voiced by jennifer coolidge hot dog okay so if you're listening to this i'm just gonna rant because i think we're well, not talk, rant but talk a lot because i think it's funny um my wife has this thing where she's really good at the jennifer coolidge impression impression so sometimes like we'll be like hot dog and she'll be like real bad or reverse like vice versa and it's so fucking funny my dad fucking loves it he like he doesn't do it in the voice but he's like hey hey jennifer coolidge now and my girlfriend does it my wife does it it's so funny um i will say my two favorite crushes that i saw of you guys is by the way um the principal principal bump i think from the owl house that's fucking crazy to me you 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 guys <laughs> i don't even know what to say that was crazy um and then the villain lady the purple one from what's it called um oh Nem emperor's new groove that was that that was astonishing you gilf lovers gilf as in grandma and grandfather lovers are fucking awesome and i love you guys okay you keep this economy going okay keep liking these funny old cartoon characters it is so good funny to see and i absolutely adore it thank you guys so much to everyone who interacted with their premiere and i'm not offended if people don't it's, i just think it's fun because when we interact i have a really really good time and i just want you guys to know if you watch it and you're scared to comment don't don't be scared because i'm more scared than you guys are i'm 20 times more awkward okay never feel scared i love talking to like you guys it's so funny i love to see your guys' comments on the things i say uh yeah it is super cool Thank you guys all so much. And if you're still watching somehow, even after this long as ending part, I have a community tab. If you guys want to just rant about your OCs, I don't have a lot of artist friends, so I don't really get a chance to talk about my OCs except to like my wife and then my brothers who don't care. So <laughs> yeah, I, everyone deserves a safe space. I will respond to all of them. I'm just waiting a few days so that everyone can get it out of their system and then I'll respond to all of them because I like to mass respond because it makes my life so much easier. Okay, I think that's all. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you are here, uh, commissions, like, subscribe, yeah, whatever. You guys know the gist. Okay. Hope you smiled today. Hope you make a no see. Hope you have a good day. Learn a new skill. Do a somersault if you're able. Okay. Bye-bye. 
I'm losing my fucking ball. 